Now the question is, what is the state of the movement even post the election of Senator Brown? I would argue it is strong, it is healthy. I would argue that we remain philosophical, not ideological, because as those who've read Russell Kirk understand, conservatism is the negation of ideology. We fit our mind to the world, not the world to our mind. We understand that the conservative movement is organic, that it is based upon the individual who will apply the eternal principles of conservatism to meet the challenges of their time and conserve a cherished way of life. And we also understand that despite the smears of the left, conservatism is not an act of negation and hate. Conservatism is an act of creation and love, a love for a cherished way of life we have inherited and will bequeath to our children. And on the note of creation, there has been some word that I've heard that the Republican Party and the conservative movement constitutes the party of no. I think a look at the facts should disabuse people of that notion. After all, when the American people asked for constitutional limited government, the Democrats said no. When the American people asked for fiscal integrity and discipline in government spending, the Democrats said no. When the American people asked for smaller deficits and a reduction of the debt, the Democrats said no. When the American people asked for an all the above energy strategy so that we can transition responsibly to a free market green energy future, the Democrats said no. When the American people asked to keep the consensus against using your tax dollars for abortions at home and abroad, the Democrats said no. And when the American people asked to have the current government-run health care plan scrapped and to start from scratch from free market patient-centered principles, the Democratic Party said no. Perhaps this is why the people of America said yes to Governor Christie, yes to Governor McDonnell, and yes to Senator Brown. Because the American people know that to the American people, it is the Democratic Party that says no. And to the American people, we say yes. Because we have always understood that America's ultimate strength and salvation remains her free people. And we need to remember this now and affirm it more than ever. Because we stand at a crucible of liberty where we must define freedom for generations to come. As a conservative, as a Republican, we look to history for a guide in difficult times. And we do live in difficult times. We need look no further than the greatest generation to see many parallels between their challenges and our own. When you think of the greatest generation, they faced four great challenges. The upheavals of industrialization, a world war against an evil enemy. They faced the rise of the Soviet Union as a strategic threat and rival model of governance. And they faced the moral question of whether the Constitution of the United States applied to all citizens equally, regardless of race. Today, our global generation of Americans faces four great challenges. The upheavals of globalization, a world war against evil enemies the rise of the communist Chinese superstate as a strategic threat and rival model of governance, and the question of whether moral relativism will erode the culture of a nation built upon self-evident truths. In general, the greatest generation faced their crises consecutively. Our global generation of Americans faces our crises simultaneously. As conservatives, as Republicans, we understand that it is for enduring goals that we must strive to achieve in this difficult time to help our nation continue to be 
a revolutionary experiment in human freedom and self-government. We understand that we must continue to expand liberty and self-government. We must conserve our cherished institutions of faith, family, community, and country. We must empower the American people to channel necessary constructive change. And we must defend America from her enemies. In pursuing these goals, we abide five permanent principles. Our liberty is from God, not the government. Our sovereignty is in our souls, not the soil or a scepter. Our security is from strength, not a surrender or appeasement. Our prosperity is from the private sector, not the public sector. And our truths are self-evident, not relative. In applying these principles to meet these goals, to conquer these challenges, we understand that reasonable minds may differ even if we come at it from shared premises and principles, for we recognize that politics is the art of the possible. But I have no doubt that together, whether it be through the entrepreneurial idealism we see from the Tea Party, or the traditionist means of virtuous citizenship which allow you to peaceably assemble and petition your government for the redress of grievances, that Americans will come together and that over time, we will not only recognize, but we will surmount the challenges in front of us. And history will look back when we are finished, and they will thankfully say that they met their duty. They turned the greatest nation on earth over to the hands of their progeny, and they will tip their cap to us, for we will heed freedom's summons as expressed by Rupert Brooke. Now God be thanked, who has matched us with his hour, and caught our youth, and wakened us from sleeping. Wide awake, we Americans, we champions of freedom, will move every mountain, we will meet every challenge, and we will strive towards the light of the blossoming dawn that is our newest birth of freedom. Because we know our future is bright because the future is you. Thank you for having me.